Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the third and final match of the winner's bracket. This is going to be on Polypoid. Actually, we're going to get the nice text. I wonder who created these maps, because whoever did, they have like the official maps. Up right in corner, we have Jess as the purple Protoss, aka okay, Cookie. Bottom right in corner, we have Etric as the white Terran. This is on Polypoid. Whoever wins this match advances to the round of eight. Whoever loses this match is going to go to the final match between... Whoever wins the out of the losers bracket on the opposite side, which I'll talk about that later. Keep in mind, there's a lot of lag going on in this match. So that, and I almost feel like the ranch that I put in previously was timely. I actually got confirmation from Jess in chat that, yep, went zealots to try to abuse the lag. However, being Peruvian, and I don't know, I feel like Peru ends up having a lot of lag practically to everybody. At least that's the impression I get from people out in the scene. Looks like we're not going to see a front door block. We are going to see that supply depot again alongside that refinery. As far as more of an interior marine defense, should there be aggressive zealots in the base right off the bat. This is one of those maps that I feel like is more lent towards quick economic. I'm almost wondering if we're going to see another 12 Nexus. I take it back. Nope, we see a gateway right off the way, right out of the way for uh, Jess. This is a four-player map, so scouting can be significant. If Jess goes bottom right, could be a big advantage, and it looks like, nope, going to go Wittershins for the scouting uh, comparatively, so going to end up inside of Etric's base last. It's dangerous for either player to not have eyes on their opponent, because both both players are very, very creative. In the last match showing, I wanted to say that what we've seen from Jess many times in BSL is just a lot of grit, but here we saw Etric just putting up a huge amount of fight. Anyway, getting back to the thing I was saying previously, yeah, I feel like... It was well timed because I'm saying like you, you have builds for lag, you have things you're doing in lag, and then comparatively there's what you do in low lag. As a result, you almost have to kind of split or divide your style of play. And I almost wonder if <laughs> it'd be kind of an interesting tournament to be like the all lag tournament. Who does the best? And I know that there's programs where you can kind of create artificial lag here and there, but that would be silly. Three SCV on gas are probably going to see a faster factory rather than faster command center, which probably I assume seeing Etrix play up to this stage, we're probably going to see one fac into expand. We'll have to see. Another supply depot going down, creating that kind of nice concave space probe. Checking bottom right, now making its way to scout Etrix base. We do have a 7x core being built. No zealot to start. And I do believe with the timing, as long as just blocks the ramp with that dragoon, should be able to box out Etrix scout and put him in the dark as well. And I don't know what I would suggest <laughs> at this stage. We are seeing that factory being built, additional Marines. So three at least, this is going to be able to definitively block out that probe scout. Might even get a probe kill, depending on how this probe approaches the ramp. So getting initially hit, taking about two hits off there, scooting right back out. Range being upgraded, Dragoon is gonna be there. It just needs to go ahead and, and block that ramp. The thing, with Jess, is just, Jess has a huge amount of tricks uh, up her sleeve as well. So either way, I don't know. Could be anyone's match. Etric showing some creativity both directions. I think that was really shown in game two from both players aggressively trying to scout one another. I feel like, uh, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Bunker's going to be up. Barracks floating out. Going to plop down on that front door. Four Marines are going to be in that bunker. And we do have that factory finished with that machine shop. So I think this is going to be standard siege tank. I think it's going to be a, just a standard... Oh, I take it back. As I'm like, oh, this is going to be a standard. Take the command center or do the thing with the siege tank. I think we're going to see quick vulture drops from Etric. Two gate opener with Robo, though. Which is not the best against for the for the vulture drop because oftentimes this allows you to have more dragoons out in the field you also with the robotics facility you can get that observer out for those mines um, and on top of that oh going speed first interesting i'm wondering if this is going to be a two-pronged attack actually um also keep in mind ugh, blockading just actually also showing indications to take an Nexus, but might not take an Nexus. Maybe he wants to kill that SCV before making decisions either way. But still pumping, critically not cutting Dragoons here to get that Nexus. And that's going to allow additional Dragoons to deal with these Vultures. There's the control tower being dropped down and Engineer being, being built to follow just in case DTs uh, were out in the field. But here's the thing, yeah, okay, yeah, you have speed, but if there's no Nexus to kind of harass, and actually Jess having the same idea, opposite corner of the map. So getting, so before going Nexus, getting a shuttle, so Nexus not even there. A shuttle's going to be up. 
a gateway. And this almost looks like a, a bulldog play, comparatively. This will, this could be very interesting, both directions. So, just sealing the front door on this back corner, getting a turret down near that natural. Both players going for aggressive openers. SCV sees the shuttle now as it's wandering in. So Etric being progressively aggressive, progressively aggressive, con continuously aggressive against this. Unfortunately, the composition of Jess's army could be favorable, could be favorable. Because this is just a bunch of vultures to try to deal with some elevating dragoons and things like that. Siege tech is just now being researched. We do have this dropship that's going to meander out, and it could be <clears throat> slaughter versus slaughter. Is the shuttle going to see this dropship? I don't think... Does Jess react? And if Jess is reacting, is she just going to keep Dragoons at the main? Okay, shuttle taking a significant amount of damage, wandering in. Two Zealots are going to be able to get right on top of that SCV line. We'll try to keep an eye on both directions. Dragoons just walking by those marines realizing okay it's just marines they're going to get end up, end up getting pinned in there that shuttle is down four vultures now in the main versus dragoons keep in mind they don't have mines siege tech is upgraded but there's no siege tank just yet the dragoons having trouble at the main it looks like scvs are having to fight zealots right there there is a siege tank to deal with that but the dragoons on the low ground going to disrupt that in the meantime vultures at least so i'm not sure how many kills they got but they've gotten significant amount of kills because every Worker count counts here. That's getting cleaned up pretty rapidly. And now the Dragoons working on the Supply Depot. SCV's trying to repair. Tank is going to siege. Keep in mind that Zealot might be able to swing around while he's distracted. Let's see if that Zealot can get on, on top of that siege tank. But it looks like both players, both directions, able to clean things up. Kind of almost an afterthought. I like that the SCV's turning around, boxing those Dragoons in so they get wiped out. So, <laughs> as things reset... I don't know who to call in the lead here. I think Jess, maybe. Because Jess is going to go ahead and plop down the Nexus behind this. Has additional Dragoons moving forward. Should have an Observatory in not too long. Etric is going to go ahead and take his Command Center. But I don't know. Maybe it's just on potentiality Jess is at a disadvantage. Because with this Starport as kind of an, axe fact an X factor in play, there's the potential of drops and things like that. Could go either way. I don't know who to call here. The Dragoon's going to try to sneak by... Again, and pick off that siege tank. Are able to do so. Get that and the vulture. That's going to cost two dragoons. Just being very aggressive. Not quite able to get the SCV. Does manage to get the SCV now to slow down this command center. The tank with the SCV is trying to go on the low ground. To try to push these dragoons out. Are, able to, are going to be able to do so. And this is an unusual play. An engineering bay and a barracks on the opposite side of the bunker. So that is, I think, what was that? Eight dragoons. Six kills on this tank, hero tank. And Etrix now take, uh, taking that natural expansion. That's going to be somewhat delayed. Just has some decisions to make now. Lost two waves of Dragoons. Is getting a robotic support bait and a forge to follow. So I assume the forge is either to get a cannon at the main to deal with any sort of vulture drop. So probably plop a cannon at the natural. Plop a cannon in the main just in case some vulture drops continue. And go for reaver drops to try to slow down Etrix's economy. Perhaps sneak a third past that because... Just expended a lot of Dragoons and honestly really got a Siege Tank in just to slow down Natural Expansion. Didn't even get a Natural Expansion kill. But we do see another dropship being built for Etric with Siege Tanks and Vultures now. And Jess might be in a, a spot of trouble. Does have her own shuttle, but this is going to be, what is this, five, six Dragoons to deal with this. And with a bit of micro, Etric could pull ahead. There are Dragoons in position to go ahead and engage this dropship as it's moving across. Both players being extremely aggressive on either side of the field. Siege tank drops. Just now responding to it. Able to get on top of that. Additional damage. Does see that dropship dropping off. One vulture able to get towards the main. A cannon is warping in. And the Dragoon's going to be a little bit delayed. So that, I don't know, is that going to be one? Uh, unfortunately targeting the cannon rather than the probe. So now getting one kill. Could have gotten more. Is having trouble getting a second kill. And overall that was complete. So gets two kills but a completely empty drop for Etric. Now getting a Wraith. Wow. Etric continuing with the pressure. Another Siege Tank. So this is going to be three Siege Tanks on the ground. A turret. So almost pulling the exact same maneuver on the opposite corner. Dropship has meandered into that upper left-hand corner. And Jess at this stage opting to, let's see, if cut 
cutting production, going ahead and grabbing. So again, cut production, use Zealots, and a Reaver to try to do some harass. Unfortunately, there is this turret alongside two turrets to provide some defense there. I don't see any turrets in the main, but there is a siege tank. This is kind of the soft opener. Two turrets being placed on that top corner to perhaps provide some defense there. I still think it can shoot the gap and get through, though. But with that Wraith, that Wraith going to catch that shuttle midfield. So the Reaver going to have to drop low, and the Dragoons are probably going to have to run to midfield. So after this shuttle's taken out, the Dragoons are going to have to run forward to save this Reaver and Zealots. Let's see if they opt to do so. Okay, yeah, two Dragoons moving forward. I don't know if that's precisely worth it. One shuttle, and especially with additional turrets still being placed. If this, if it was just a Wraith and not the turrets, I feel like that would have been a win overall for Etric, but as it is, I don't know. Dropship meandering, meandering its way back. Jess is getting a fourth, sorry, third and fourth base to push things economically. I think realizing, okay, the Wraith, that's a lot of extra minerals and gas. Just now plopping down the second factory at 11 minutes. That's how crazy a game it's been up to this stage. At the 11 minute mark, we're getting a second factory and a third factory. Etric, here's the thing for Etric. Okay, yeah, he has some mobility, but at the same time, with just vultures and the light tank count, really doesn't have any army that poses a threat to, to Jesse's three and soon to be, I assume, four and five gateways. Actually, Jesse going straight to Stargate to follow this up. Is this going to be a quick carrier switch off four base and just relying on the defensive? I kind of like this play if that's the case. Or is it going to be a quick arbiter? Yeah, Fleet Beacon. So going to go four base carrier to follow this up. Relying on the fact that Etric is going to be pinned back with a small attack force and really doesn't have any sort of push of any kind to execute it. But Vulture is making their way to the north. There is a cannon, to, two cannons to deal with Vultures at the 12 o'clock. One cannon, uh, sorry, no cannons yet at the mineral only, but there there is some troop station there. The one thing that could ruin this is if this Vulture drop goes for the main and essentially this, these Vultures and dropships scout in that position. So let's see if that would be huge. So Vultures now dropping in that mineral only. Units not reacting. One Vulture dropping there. Additional units moving in. Do the Vultures go and see? They see the Stargate and dropping mines along the way. Also, not a lot of Dragoons to provide some defense against this. So now Etric knows that he needs to get Goliaths or Anti-Air in a hurry. Might even, I don't know, might even throw in some Wraiths. Considering that early starport, the Vultures continuing to provide some harassment. The Vultures trying to find... Trying to get that they are going to get some mines down, it looks like, on that gateway. Probe coming off the line. Battle probe once again. And some of these... Yeah, these... Actually, the Vultures, on, if, if only scouting information, provided a huge boon to Etric. So one Vulture left. Very little health. I'm not sh sure even that Jess realizes that there's only one Vulture left. Nothing else happening with that drop. But now Etric's in a situation where, yeah, he just needs to... I would expect more factories. If, say, additional factory being plopped, he does have another command center. Has another, yeah, grabbing two additional factories. Does have level one weapons along the way. Anyway, he's grabbing another armory. So if he can fill in, get, looks like that vulture was killed without much incident otherwise in the base. Citadel of a Dune plopping down. So I'm almost wondering if this is going to be, as an adjustment from Jess, just a light three carrier count and then a switch to Arbiter? I don't know. We'll see. Two carriers at least. We'll see if the carrier production continues. This is a tech switch and a vulnerable situation. Observer getting killed at that natural... Sorry, at that mineral only. I keep wanting to call mineral only as natural expansions for some reason. Worker count just about even a slight supply lead for Jess is where you want to be as Protoss. About 10, 15 supply ahead. Additional gateways being plopped down. This is the critical moment though. Is In this tech switch, can Etric capitalize on it. Can he get additional Goliath something out to cope with this? Currently, maybe he doesn't realize that it's Goliath. Maybe just waiting and wants to fill in the gap with Vultures, because I don't see any Goliath production happening yet. You really need Goliath and weapon upgrades to make this happen. More Vultures sliding in. Now sees the carrier, for, so knows definitively that it is carrier tech. But still just rely... Oh, nice mind drag into the, the rest of the vultures. And it looks like the Zealot's going to go ahead and clear the rest of the mines. Unfortunately, two for one. And now Etric pushing up with four marines and six siege tanks. And a science vessel. 
and a lot of vultures to follow. Reaver going to walk into this. Might get some shots from the high ground. Just very light on units. Keep in mind, in the middle of a tech switch, so didn't have a lot of units to speak of. The Marines actually providing decent defense against the Interceptors in low numbers. And Etric, again, showing just creative timing pushes in that natural expansion. And so I think Jess was caught, and Etric has the timing here. Mining up that natural expansion. Continuing to press into this. Cannon down. Vultures on top of the probes there. Keep in mind, there are two other mining bases. Additional turrets being planted, and it looks like Etric has managed to seal in his Protoss opponent. And more units streaming across the map to reinforce this. A hand, and here's the thing. Jess has some gateways. But again, it, it, this is very reminiscent of the end of Game 2. Except at a much earlier point in time. Natural expansion down. Carrier being pushed back. And now some Goliaths filtering in. Jess down 20 supply. Has some Zealots on the high ground. I think they might be speed upgraded. But I don't know that Jess has just the raw units to survive this. Mineral only now being assaulted. That Reaver desperately moving around getting wiped out. So that base being cleaned up. So Jess losing. And I think Etric might have done it. Might have done it. More units filtering across. Probes fleeing to go ahead and mine at the 12 o'clock base. Additional cannons being planted to just buy time, essentially, to get more carriers out, more interceptors on the ground. Trying to catch these Goliaths while they're distracted and firing at something that isn't the air. And having a little bit of success doing so. Trying to get two, eke two more carriers out. Just now in the red, though. And Etric continuing... To solidify this lead and this shell by going ahead and grabbing additional supply depots in the front. A very light siege tank count on the front. Zealots making their way across, but with a nice defensive matrix and those vultures blocking the way, going to hold this. Oof. Six o'clock locations also being taken by Etric to go ahead and get that economic lead. And all the siege tanks that were at that natural expansion wandering up to the 12 o'clock base to go ahead and wipe that out. And that is a... I'm not sure if that's a no GG or a GG in chat. I'm going to assume a GG in chat from Jess. That's rough. Especially after that game two. So Jess is going to move on to the final match. Etric is going to advance to the round of eight. A fun one to close it. I, I really like seeing these two players play each other. I know the lag kind of makes it a little bit more nuts. But it feels like they're both creative and have a lot uh, to offer as far as fun brood, brood war matches. Hope you guys enjoy. Congratulations to Etric. Jess going to the final match. I'm hoping Jess makes it through the final. I'm kind of rooting for Jess at this stage given this uh, result. But in the loser's match, we'll see who Jess goes up against. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.